What's up everybody, Bill with Honest Open Permaculture Hot Farm. I've been doing a lot of studying up lately in the past couple weeks about bees, and I think I'm about ready to start. Let me show you how I'm gonna start. So instead of buying my own bees, or finding someone that has bees that wants to give them up, I am going to attempt to catch my own bees. And these things, swarm traps. So I have made two swarm traps and I'm also going to use my hive it's all painted up ready as a swarm trap also so let's show you how we're doing it okay guys so all a swarm trap is is somewhere that a bees that are swarming can go find a home at so since I don't have any bees yet why not use the hive that I'm gonna put the bees in as a swarm trap until I get bees so that's what I'm gonna do with the hive in this area. This is where we're eventually gonna have bees anyways. Not in this exact spot, it'll be down a little bit further. Um, but this was kind of just tucked back into this hedge of blackberries and the forest is right behind me. So running this way is north and south and then running this way, or excuse me, east and west is this way, north and south is this way. So this box is facing a southern direction it's which I've heard when you're trying to catch a swarm, the best position to place your box is in a southern, southeastern direction. And that's what this is. If I tilted it a little bit more that way, it'd be more of a southeastern direction. What else do we need to catch bees? Well, we need a lure, something to attract the bees. And what we have for that is lemongrass oil. Now the lemongrass oil mimics or smells like the pheromones of a scout bee. Um, so when a, a hive swarms, the queen leaves, about, takes about half to 70% of the hive with it, leaves another queen behind and some worker bees to, to restart the hive. Well, that queen leaves, takes a bunch of bees with it, the scout bees go out and they try to find places, trying to find homes, a new home, for that hive, for that swarm to go into. Um, and when they find it, they admit a pheromone that smells a lot like lemongrass oil. So we will use this pheromone to attract the scout bees to come to this and to these other ones right down here, right below you. And it's pretty simple. Let's take the lid off. Now this is the front. If there's bees in it, and I'm trying to operate it. I want to do it around the back. I'll take the lid off here. And these are brand new frames. These inserts are wax coated. Uh, so I hope that will help. Has a little scent to it. We're gonna use the lemongrass oil. And one other thing, Q-tip. So first, let's go ahead and put some lemongrass oil on the Q-tip. And we wanna dab it all around the entrance. I got the long entrance open so they have a good wide entrance to go in and out of. Alright, so we got a Q-tip nice and saturated and we're putting it all along the, the rail, right along the entrance. And then we're going to hit the other side of the Q-tip get it nice and saturated. Now we're going to take this and drop it down in the back of the hive. So the entrance is here, we want to drop this down the back of the hive so that smell keeps wafting out of the hive. Let's drop it down right back there. Put the lid back on. And bada boom, bada bing, just like that, we turned our hive into a swarm trap. So that would be really cool if we could catch a swarm in the hive that we're going to start our bees in. But we have two backups. We're gonna take these two, we unstack them here, back in the woods, and we're gonna set them up on a tree. Before we leave this spot, I wanna show you why I put it there. See all those flowers right there? It's attracting honeybees already. I saw honeybees on those flowers, the blackberry flowers. So I kind of tucked it back in those bushes right there, hoping it would do the job. Go back around that way, and we're gonna go 
back in these woods and set one. Okay, so just barely through those white flowers right there, you can barely see the white box. I don't know if I can point at it or not. It's right back there. So let's back you back out and show you. So let's turn. And our new spot's gonna be at the entrance of the woods up this tree right here. So let's show you these swarm boxes. I built these. Now, I did not come up with the plans. I got them from YouTube. I got the dimensions and everything from Aaron, I think it's Blinks from Blinks Bees. Let me look that up real quick to make sure. Hold on, give me one second. Brinks Bees, Aaron Brinks from Brinks Bees. I found him on YouTube and he made these swarm traps. It didn't look like the, it was really, really complicated or anything, so I've decided to give it a try. And so far I've made two of them. So let's open it up and show you show you what it's all about. So we got this right here. I added this on. I didn't see his, this on his design. This is so I can hang it in the tree with some screws and the drill. And here's the lid. The lid comes on and off. I can screw the lid shut so in case we get a storm, the lid doesn't go flying through the storm. Here's where we got our frames. So the frames sit right in here. Uh, these frames have been used before, which is okay. They said it's actually pre probably better that a frame has been used um, to attract the bees. It's got a bee scent on it already. But one of the weird things, one of the different things about the swarm traps is if you, if you know anything about bees, you know you shouldn't have that much room at the bottom of your box. But from what we hear here, the bees love that when they're swarming. The scout bees will go in that little hole down there at the bottom, see the big opening, look up, and see all these frames and it's ideal for them. We've got six frames that can fit in these swarm boxes. So it's a little bit bi bigger than a nook or a nuke to where you get, um, I believe five frames in a nuke, a nuke box. So it's a little bit bigger. It's got six frames. Uh, the hole is, needs to be anywhere from a half inch to an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. So I did a double hole of half inch drill bit did a half inch drill bit, half inch drill bit, and made a nice entrance for the bees in the front. What else to say? Um, really, not much else to say besides once I put this up against the tree, screw this part to the tree, I've got some really strong paracord I will wrap around the box and the tree to help keep it snug even more. Now, I have seen a lot of people use ratchet straps to ha hook them up to the tree. That's how Bricks Bees, the guy I saw make these boxes, that's how he said he would do it, is he would use a ratchet strap and just ratchet strap it to the tree, which I'm sure will work just fine. But we're going to screw them onto the tree with these back pieces and then also tie it down to the tree. Let's we'll see if we can get that box up in that tree without breaking our neck. <laughs> This trap has already been set. I've been running this, I've ran this trap for about four days now. So I'm gonna just tighten the box back down, the lid, because I loosened it up so I could show you guys what's inside. So now the lid's nice and tight. I am gonna dab just a little oil in front of that hole. I know I just baited it um, like four days ago, but I'm gonna rebate just, just the hole. All right, we dabbed a little oil in front of the hole. I got two inch deck screws. Hopefully two inch decking screws would be sufficient. But in case it's not, we are going to tie it up. Also, let's take a piece of paracord with us. it up there in the tree not as high as I want to get it but it's up in the tree so we've got one more to put up and I might need to get a ladder or something to stand on to get it up a little bit higher but let's go back further in the woods
Let's go scout out a spot. I like that tree right there. It's nice and straight. Got a drop off to it. Sadari's got some height built into it. See how it just drops off right there? And then boom. So it looks like we had some trees fall in the last storm. We'll have to check that out. Let's go walk and do some quick scouting down this path real quick. Let's see if we can find A nice place hanging up hanging over the creek for some reason I just think would be a nice area for it simply because I think if a swarm was trying to look for a place you know a, a creek would be a good place to travel down to find a bunch of trees like this hmm Yeah, I like that tree back there. Let's go back to that tree back there and see if we can't figure out a way to get that swarm trap up in that tree. This tree right here, and I forgot I had a ladder back here in the woods. So this will be perfect. Let me put you guys down, hold on. Okay, let's see if this goes any easier. Set the swarm trap with the lure. That's ideal right there. I'm 5'10", and this is a good six inches over my head. So the hole's six and a half foot up. The frames are, well, seven to eight foot up. Right. It is more facing in a, uh, in a westerly direction, southwest instead of southeast. It's facing this way instead of this way. It's okay. I think it'll be all right. All right guys, all three swarm traps are set. Uh, cross your fingers for me. Let's hope we catch a swarm, at least one swarm. If we catch more than one swarm, that's cool. I I'd love to have more than one beehive. So I'm gonna try to catch as many as I can and start as many bees as I can. I really wanna try to catch my own swarm and not buy some bees simply because the swarm that I catch here will already be acclimated to my climate, to my weather, to my area, to my seasons. So they're most likely gonna be feral bees that live off in the woods, off in a tree hollow somewhere. And they swarm, find my box. They've already made it through one winter. They'll be able to make it through more winters. They know how to fight off diseases in our area. They know how to naturally get rid of uh, mites and, and beetles and wax moth and all the pests that can come along and mess up your hives. The swarms, the ones that are naturally here and adapted to your area already are the best ones to use for that. Now you can absolutely, if you can't catch a swarm or don't know how or don't want to try and just want to order some bees, you can absolutely order a package of bees or a nuke box of bees. If this doesn't work, we may go that route. We'll see. There is some other options for us, like some, some bee donation programs that are out there. Um, but. I'm a little weird when it comes to stuff like that. Um, most of those bee donation programs want you to come and learn on their bees, um, give time, make sure they know, make just, just so that I guess make sure they know you know what you're doing. Um, but if you guys know me, I'm not really, that's not me, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not gonna go take classes in a university or somewhere to go learn. I'm gonna learn on my own time. I'm gonna make my own mistakes and I think this is the best way to do it without stepping on anyone's toes, not hurting anybody's feelings, saying I don't want your help. It's not like that. I just like learning on my own and uh, um, 
like I said, I think this is gonna be the best way for me to do it. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe and hit that bell notification. It'll let you know every time I upload a video so you don't miss a single bee update. I'm gonna take a little bit of oil. I'm gonna drop it around the tree here and uh, maybe even drop some down in the creek on a piece of wood and let that float down the creek and just to kind of waft those smells in this area. See you guys.